Come in if you are happy today. You just sense the spirit of victory in this place. I want to read you a verse that says this, and, and for 2 Corinthians 1, 19 and 20, it says, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and he is the one whom Timothy and Silas and I have preached to you, and he has never been both a yes and a no. He has always been and always will be for us a resounding yes. For all of God's promises find their yes of fulfillment in him, and as his yes and our amen ascend to God, we bring him glory. Now, the last time I checked, all of my needs are met according to his riches in glory. Amen. How many of you believe the Bible today? Do we have some Bible-believing folks here? That means when you hear the promises, you go, I believe that. I take that as mine, so therefore I'm going to say amen, so be it. And because I'm responding to God with an amen and letting him know I believe that, I can expect God to take that word and manifest it in my life. Amen. So as we say amen, there's a reason. You know, we're not just religious people acting religiously. When we do things the Bible way, God's power is on his word. The incorruptible word, the word says. The incorruptible word. Everyone say, the incorruptible word. That means there's zero failure in this right here. The word of God has zero failure. So we can enjoy and have the confidence that when we do something that God has instructed us to do, we know there's an empowerment that's activated right there. Right then, when you act on the Word of God, God goes to work for you, making sure that promise comes to pass. Amen. I can tell we're going to have a good time in this place. You all came ready, didn't you? I, I can tell you came ready. Why don't you just lift your hands for just a moment? Father, we thank you. There's nothing impossible to them that believe. You said nothing is impossible to them that believe. Without you, we can do nothing. But with you, we can do all things. All things are available to us because we know you and we believe you to do what you said. Father, we thank you for your presence. Wherever you are, you said wherever two or three gather together in your name, you're in the midst of them. And you didn't leave your power back up in heaven. Wherever you are, everything you have is in this place. Everything you can do is available to us in this place. So we have great confidence, Father. We thank you for your presence in our lives and in this room today. We give you glory in advance. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Move up and down these rows of chairs. Move in this place today. We give you free reign. We're not in control of anything. We need you. We need you. And so we acknowledge you. And we look for you to speak to us. Whatever changes need to be made in our lives, we're willing we are willing. Everyone say, I'm willing. I'm willing. Say, Father God, Father God, open up my understanding today. Let me see. Let me know some things I didn't know before. Help me go higher in you. Today I make myself available to you. I am willing and I'll be obedient to you. Thank you for your love for us. That you love us enough to not leave us the way we are. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sure is good to be a part of a family of God, isn't it? I mean, uh, in, in, the, in the Word of God, it says they return to their own company. There was a safety there when you're a part of a company. How many of you are thankful for One Way Family Church? Amen. Amen. Well, go ahead and be seated there.
Praise the Lord. We're excited to be with you. This is our first time. So if you're, how many of you uh, said you were visiting this morning? This is your first time here. One, two, anybody else? One, two, okay. Did you get the, uh, the, uh, the Connect card? Did you get one of those? Well, good. Well, I'm sure they're excited about you being here, and this church is growing, and they're going places, and uh, Annie and I, uh, this is our first time here to be here and to minister, and so uh, if, if you're feeling uncomfortable, it's our first time too. So, uh, and just to let you know, Annie and I, we uh, have purpose in our heart. We are going to be this church's favorite traveling minister. We're, we're just, we're just going to declare it. We're going to say it out. We're, we're just put it out there. Now, I know that's a tough order <clears throat> because your pastor, he knows a lot of people. I mean, he knows some superstars. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Danny Gokey and all, you know, I, I can't keep up with all that. You know, it's like, you know, he, he has his own bus. I don't have a bus. But... Um, you know, the Monts, they, they, they know a lot of people, a lot of people know them, and so it's just an honor, an absolute honor to get to know them more. Of course, you know, Pastor Mont has seen us uh, for years doing things, and, but uh, we've gotten to know each other a little bit on the telephone, and we've been at some meetings, Brother Mark Hankins' meeting, and so at each time we've gotten together and talked, it, we just know we, we love each other. We just know that there's something that God's got for us together. And, uh, you know, we were telling them at the dinner table, and they know how to take, people, take care of people, by the way. You know, they, they took us over to, was it Seasons 52? I hadn't been to that restaurant in a long time. So, you know, they know how to, they know how to do things, you know. And, uh, but I was telling them <clears throat> that, um, you know, if you could get, if you have got, could have gotten in on the ground floor of, of Apple computers or, how many of you remember Amway? Anybody, <laughs> any people remember Amway? You know, if you could have gotten on the ground floor of some of those companies, you know, you think, wow, you know, I, I could have made a million dollars over and over again. Well, for Annie and I, we kind of feel that way when we come to a church like this. That's in that state of the, the phase of just taking off and growing. Everyone say, this is a growing church. <clears throat> and uh, you're going to be really blessed uh, if you're a part of this ministry. Because they're not going to let you be a loser. I'm telling you, right now, they're not going to let you be a loser. You can't stay at this church and be a loser. I'm just saying. Uh, they're going to make sure you, you overcome. They're going to make sure you get the victory. They're gonna, because of what's inside of them, they can't help it. If you're, they're not going to let you be a mediocre Christian here. They just won't. If you want to be a mediocre Christian, you're not going to feel comfortable here. But if you want victory and you want to overcome and you want to experience all the good things, those bless, 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 bless. You know what? I was getting more blessed every time I said, bless, bless. I mean, you come to a church that, that leads you in that kind of a, a charge that we are blessed. And the blessing of the Lord will make you rich. Amen. And the next church is going to like all this that I'm saying about, but uh, just, I'm, just, I'm just seeing where you're at. Just, uh, and uh, we're, we're excited about um, just where these guys are going. Uh, I, we don't have time to waste. You know, when, when God... Uh, starts you out in ministry, he lets you do a lot of different things. But, but our, our ministry is kind of getting a little bit more finer tuned and more narrow now. And so what we do for the kingdom has gotten weightier and more important, and we have to be at the right place at the right time, and whether it's around the world or whether it's in America. And so I was telling them, I thought, if we didn't totally, totally believe where they were going and what's on them to do it, we wouldn't even be here. But, but because Annie and I, we, this is, we're, we're in our, like our 42nd year of the traveling minister, ministry. Uh, we are professional visitors. We, we, tra we, we, uh, we, we go to churches for a living. This is our whole entire life. And so uh, I was telling the pastors that as we were fellowshipping, that we can already see what this church looks like in, in 20 years. We've dedicated those buildings. We, we've, we've uh, you know had ordination services with pastor's sons. We've done, we've done a lot of things, and so we recognize when the hand of the Lord is on something. We can, we can see when, when a ministry has is, is got fast traction, roots, there's a, there's a core already being established. I, I've gone to some churches, Pastor Mont, they've been gone for 10, they've been going for 15 years, and still it seems like there's no core there. But already, just in the short time being here, you can tell that there's a, a, a support system, that something is happening, it's going to be continuing to move, and you're just going to, if you're part of this place, and, I, and let me just tell you something real quick that T.L. Osborne said. Anybody remember T.L. Osborne? 
one of the greatest healing revivalists that we have experienced on this earth. He was talking to a church that had some um, financial, they, 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 they had a big vision. And there were some financial needs. Is this mine right here? I want to make sure. Is this this week's water? I just want, I don't want, I don't want last week's water. This, this one. <clears throat> you know, I've, I've been to some churches where it's like some film, like some dust on, on top of the water. I thought, that, that ain't right there. I'm not drinking that right there. I'm not drinking that. Got to watch what you're drinking there. But uh, Till Osborne said this. He said, you ought to be glad you're in a church with great financial need. And they all kind of looked at him like, why would I want to be in a church with great financial need? He said, because God's going to have to prosper you to meet the needs of that church. So if you're a part of this, you're not, we didn't say financial trouble, and these guys are not in financial trouble, but there's a lot of need because there's a lot of vision. There's a lot of vision. And so they're always going to be including you in on what God's doing. But the cool thing about it is, as there's a, a vision that's being acted upon and there's a need to, to make that vision happen, watch out. I've watched it over the years. People start getting homes. People start getting new cars. All of a sudden, people come out of lack. All of a sudden, things are just working for them when they weren't working before. All of a sudden, they're just more blessed, blessed, blessed. Blessed. And so, um, anyways, what do you want to do today? Ready to go to part B here? What, what's next? We're excited about um, uh, the word as usual. You know, David said this in uh, Psalms 119, I believe it's 162, 118, 162. He said, I rejoice over your word, Lord, like one who found a great treasure. One translation says, I'm ecstatic over what you said, like one who found... Who, won, who just struck it rich. Yeah, yeah. I like to say, my translation would be something like this. Lord, I'm so excited about what you said, like I just won the lottery. Yeah. Wow, that's good. How many of you, now don't get religious on me. How many of you would like to win the lottery? Like, like you know, didn't we have a really big one recently? It was like, I don't know, was it near billion dollars or something, you know? Uh, wouldn't you like to win, win the lottery? How many of you would like to have that lucky number? Well, you know what? We actually already do. Everyone say, I, I've got the winning ticket. If, if, you, if you're in Christ and Christ is in you, you're not getting this. Let me put it in another way. You know, the Bible says that he's given us dominion over everything he created. Everyone say, uh, let's go with millionaire. Say, say millionaire. Now say billionaire. Can you say this one? Say Trillionaire. Now, I've got one better for you, and you are already there. Say, Dominionaire. Did that, did that feel good rolling off of your... Did that, did that feel good? See, you are a Dominionaire. I don't know if you're getting this. The next church is going to like this. I'm just saying. Everyone say, Dominionaire. You've got... Dominion over everything that is on this earth. That's good, that's good. Tomorrow you'll wake up and you'll get all excited about that. I mean, it'll just dawn on you. I really have authority on this earth in the name of Jesus. That's good. Glory. Praise God. Why don't you turn to Psalms 107? I'm just going to pick a place to start. <clears throat> Psalms 107. It just sounds like a good place to start. <clears throat> Did I mention we're glad to be here? Amen. Hallelujah. It says this, Psalms 107, verse 1, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Everyone say, he is good. He is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. It says, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You know what? Faith has a voice. Amen. Righteousness has a voice. If you have a heart of thanksgiving, there must be a voice to it. Uh, the, the word is clear about not just thinking about what you receive. What, there is a, something about meditating on the word. But when it comes to praising, praising, uh, Hebrews uh, says that offer up the sacrifice of praise continually. That is the fruit of your lips, giving thanks to his name. New Testament uh, praise and worship 
it is about heart and mouth connection. Yes. Amen. You know, Jesus said one time, these, these people worship me with their lips, but their heart is far, far from me. Right. Every uh, thing that God does, and this is something uh, that Andy and I have meditated on, we got insight on this, and we've just been repeating it, and that is that uh, our everything that God does, he does through the heart. Like, for instance, if you had cancer and you needed a healing, or if you had a, you know, a kidney issue, or your right knee was giving you problems, or you're constantly having chronic back trouble, God doesn't go through your knee to heal your knee. God doesn't go through your pancreas to heal your pancreas. <clears throat> he doesn't go through your lungs if you're having breathing issues. Anything and everything God does, he does through the heart of man. <clears throat> and so that's why when God shows us throughout the word of God, we're going to talk about this morning about praising and the connection of your faith in your praise and how your praise affects your faith. And this is so good because uh, it, it, it's like this. Somebody might say, well, it's not my style to, to be vocal. And it's not my style to praise and worship. Uh, thinking that it's, it's up to the musicians to do that. Uh, Annie was ministering one time. She goes, if it's not your style to praise God, because everything that's done, uh, that, that's done with God, is, it, it's a heart exchange. Any receiving is going to be through your heart. And then it gets manifested. Well, even in your finances, it, it starts the heart of faith. It starts in your heart, and then it manifests in your finances. Uh, whether it's giving, whether it's your praise and worship. And so someone said, well, it's not really my style to praise and, and worship. And so she said this, uh, and man, we, we just, we're still at awe of the statement of, if it's not your style to praise God, it won't be your style to receive from God. Because the same, the same conduit that your praise starts from you, out of your heart, the same conduit from you to God is the same conduit back into your heart. So if you refuse to be a person that comes in, you know, in connection with the instructions of God saying, this is how you receive. Amen. You open up your heart and you out of your mouth begin to worship him and magnify him and praise him. Then there's a, an opportunity. What did Isaiah says? Those that wait upon me, or in other words, that word wait means those who will make an exchange with me. So when you go to the store, what do you do if you don't like what you've got? Someone, anybody have to re-gift something or take something back to the store? Aren't you glad they gave you the receipt and say, listen, if you don't really like this color, you can go back. But the thing, you don't just show up and go, I want the blue one instead. And they go, well, well, what are you giving me? Before I can give you the exchange, you got to give me something first. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you what it is that you're really looking for. So when Isaiah says, come on, make an exchange with me. Make an exchange with me. Those that wait upon me, there's going to be an exchange that will happen. So as you begin to wait on me, and, and, and that's not like waiting for the bus to show up. Waiting on God is beginning to worship him yes. and magnify him. And as you do that, then there's an exchange that happens. You're giving him from your heart out of your mouth. You're giving him what you've got. And that is, isn't that amazing that, that God would just simply bless you to that degree and there be an exchange just because you worshiped him? Yes. Now, I know that just makes your mind kind of go tilt. How could that even be possible? One of my favorite verses, and I'm kind of like, I can already see myself just getting order of things all messed up, but that's okay. This is what I do. This is what I do. Psalm 67, verse 5 says this. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield its increase. Let me say it again. Let the people praise thee, O God. Psalm 67, verse 5. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield its increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Now, I want you to notice that the, the first part of that verse, uh, verse 5 says, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then the earth shall give up. 
Man, it sure would be something if the Bible was true, wouldn't it? If the Bible was only true. Now, you know, I'm trying to mess with you a little bit. I'm hoping you will sit out there and go, don't be messing with my word. Don't be messing with what God said. Don't be trying to even hint for a second that God's not going to back up my word. Because I want you to know, preacher, I know that I serve a fabled God. And he's not a man that he should lie, nor a man that he should repent. If he said it, he'll do it. If he's spoken it, he'll make it good. Matter of fact, I'll just go one step further with you, preacher. As long as there's a sky above your head and there's grass underneath my feet, I know his word will stand forever. God doesn't just tell the truth. He is almighty God, and he is truth. And he said, I will confirm my word with signs following. And matter of fact, there's no shadow of turning with me. If I said something, I will back up, and I will do exactly what I said I would do. Is that what you're trying to tell me this morning? Is that... Is that what you're trying to convince me that, wait a minute, preacher, I believe if I hear the word and I act upon the word, I know I'm going to get everything he said he would do because he is a faithful God and he won't lie to me. Amen. Is, that, is that what you're trying to tell me? I feel that you're trying to tell me that. Amen. Is, that what, is that what's happening? Y'all are really trying to tell me you actually believe the Bible. Now, see, you, you say, well, well, that doesn't make any sense. That I could just praise God and God would cause increase to come to me. That doesn't even make sense. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are glad you're in covenant with a God who can do more than your brain can figure out? Because the Bible says his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. His ways are higher than your thoughts. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter whether your best friend ever experienced it. God said something that if you'll act upon it, that's exactly what he said he would do. And there's no shout out turning with him. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Are you, are you fully ready for this ride this morning? I'm not sure if you're ready for this ride. Are you ready for the ride? Yes. We're already in it right now. We're, we're not, there's no turning back now. You're stuck with me this morning. I mean, listen, if you don't like this service, please come back next week. This guy's awesome. I know he is. I've heard him. I've watched him. I know he's quality minister. You would be blessed anytime, but, but today's me. You're stuck with me. This is what you got. You're stuck with me today. Uh, let's go to some verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't we turn over to uh, Psalms chapter 5. Psalms chapter 5. You know, some people, when they come to church, they think when we, when we get a little jiggy for Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I went old school right there. I, I know I did. That was a Will Smith line. <laughs> You know, he used the word jiggy, you know. I still feel like, you know, that word just fits sometimes. You get a little jiggy for Jesus. <clears throat> <clears throat> and, and some people will think, well, you know what, those, they don't really have to be that emotional. <laughs> Is that really necessary? Yeah. Getting all, all jiggy like that? Get a, get a little movement in your right leg, you know? Just kind of jump a pew, shout a little bit. You know? Is that really necessary? You know, I, I grew up in a Pentecostal home. Assembly of God, you know, Pentecostal. And uh, I, th I thought we were just a bunch of fanatics, you know. Not everybody does what we do, you know. There was a few times that we would run. And, man, somebody get, you know, the funky chicken, you know. You know. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I mean, Brother Hagen used to dance in the spirit, and we thought he looked like Flipper. The do he, he, he was like, I thought, well, that's so Flipper, you know, so. Ever, a lot of people have different ways of expressing themselves. You know, it can be the funky chicken, it can be the, you know, it can be the flipper, you know, whatever. I've seen some weeble wobble. You remember the weeble wobbles? They don't fall down. They stay in one place and, and they'll be like, whoo. I thought, how do they not fall over? We, the weeble wobble dance. So, I mean, but, so when I grew up in church, I thought, you know, we were just kind of a bunch of crazy wild people. Crazy wild people. I thought... You know, what we do, is that, really, is that really necessary? I was at one church, black church up in D.C., and uh, have you ever seen a holy roller? Well, I've been around a long time. I couldn't remember whether I ever saw a holy roller, but this one lady, she was rolling. She was rolling back and forth. I thought, my God, this, is my, this might be my first time to see a holy roller. 
And she was going back and forth, and her skirt was starting to come up, you know, and I thought, oh, man, this ain't good. And they started throwing prayer cloths on her. Started, <laughs> they were starting to get bigger ones out, putting like blankets out of her, you know, because they're, 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 she's spinning on the floor, and they're trying to protect her from showing too much stuff, you know. And so it wasn't working. The prayer cloths kept spinning off of her. So, man, this one lady, she stepped in, and you could tell she, she knew what she was doing. She threw a cloth down. She stepped on one side. She stepped on the other side, and that person was spinning right underneath that blanket. She just spinning. a holy roller, man. She's spinning right underneath. You say, well, I would never do that. Yeah, but you know what? You didn't ever go through what she went through. If, if you came out of what maybe she went through, you might be down there spinning. A, you know what? There's this one man. He's a partner of our ministry. He's gone on to be the Lord. But his son still partners with our ministry. He sat down with us one time. He says, I need to give somewhere. He goes, uh, we made $200 million last year. So our foundation is really full. He goes, we're looking for places to sow. Wouldn't you have liked to at least known about that, right? <laughs> and he looked at us. He goes, you got any projects? And we had a, an album we were producing, I See the World in Worship. You can get it out there. And uh, he said, well, good, because when I get home, I'll send you a check. It was $37,000 right there, right at breakfast. Hallelujah. Annie got up, pushed her breakfast chair in at the Renaissance Hotel. Went. <laughs> so it's amazing the things that will make you dance. Amen. But Hallelujah. two days earlier, we had sown the album was going to cost $37,000, and we only had $5,000 to get the thing started, and we gave it in the offering, all of it. So we have now nothing. We're starting the album in just about three days. Two days later, I'm sitting at the breakfast table, and he gives us the whole amount. I'll tell you, so there are things that will get you out of your chair. When God answers your prayer, when he meets your need, when he heals you from cancer, and there's something in your life you know you couldn't have done yourself. There's absolutely no way you could have, but God, but God. Everyone say, but God, he brought you out. You'll find your dance. Yeah. So when someone starts spinning under the, the tarp, I, hey, I, hey, let's just rejoice for her. That's right, that's right, amen. And I have found out that the, the more rejoicing and more excited you get about the word and the promises of God, the more it's like a magnet to God doing what he's been wanting to do for you because you're showing God, I actually trust you. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Because while you're worrying and you're clammed up and you got that spirit of poopy pants on you, do you know what I mean by poopy pants? You ever see a, a toddler who's got a full load coming into church? Man, he comes walking. I know there's not a lot of kids here, but they'll come walking in to the, their grandparents or their mom, and you can see it all over their face. They, they got a full load. They're going, you know what's going on. And... I can see some grandparents here. How many of you are grandparents? Do you ever have to think about loving them? No. You have to think about loving your kids, but you don't ever have to think about... Okay. You don't ever have to think about loving your grandkids. But when they come, and they, you, you know, there are people that come into church, and that's unacceptable. So growing up uh, in a Pentecostal home, I, I just thought, you know, we were a little on the crazy side. You know, we were all more emotional and all that. But then I read my Bible. I actually started reading some Bible verses. How many of you want to read a couple verses? Because there's a certain way you're supposed to act right. in church. Amen. I have found this. And, and, and uh, I started ministry when I was two. I'm 64. Last week I turned 64. And, uh, but when I was two years old, my father used to be the choir director and worship leader for Calvary Assembly in Orlando. Right off of I-4, that church grew to 7,000 members in the 70s. Fastest growing church in America. It was the first mega church. Wow. Benny Hinn started his traveling ministry there, his healing ministry there. Charisma Magazine got started there. And, uh, but on many weekends, my father's ministry, choir and orchestra, would travel all throughout Florida. Here's what I found out. You want to know, you want to know what I found out in the last 62 years, traveling ministry? You want to know what I found out? I have found out that the churches that are the most vocal in their praise... And that's why, let, let me just say this real quick, and, 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 and think on this. Don't, don't, don't be uh, offended by this, but be careful about too much clapping when it's time to praise and worship. Cl 
clapping really is neither praise nor worship. It's an expression of excitement. There, there are times to express excitement. So I, I, I'm not, we're not anti-clapping. But when it comes to, when, it, when, when the focus is on him, the Bible is very clear. Lift up holy hands without wrath or doubting. And offer up the sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of your lips. Giving thanks. So just, I tell you, it's, it, it, it shows a lot more reverence when you're vocal. Because you know what? When you say something, you have to think about it. That's right. That's right. I can do this whether I'm thinking about anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, you know, I, 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 can just, I can do that all day long and, and not even be my, my heart hooked up. That's right. But when I say, if I, like, you know, I think the Lord is like my wife Annie sometimes. I'll say, Annie, I love you. And, and usually I just look at her and she knows that's enough. But every now and then she puts me on the spot. She goes, why? <laughs> oh, okay, I got to pull one together here, you know? You know you, you, man, you know what I'm talking about? You get put on the spot, you got you to come up with something. Well, that's what, when we, from our hearts and with our mouths, yes, yes. when we praise and worship God, we have to think about it. And now, and now our heart's getting connected to what is coming out of your mouth. And Amen. that is what God is into. You know, I heard one preacher says, if you're not into your praise, what makes you think God is? All right. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I think he might be talking to you right now. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> if you're not into your praise, if it doesn't move you, something thought provoking, you may not be connecting. I was having a lunch in Orlando with Phil Driscoll. I don't know if you ever heard of him, trumpet player, phenomenal. For me to be a trumpet player and with him three hours at Hillstone Restaurant in Orlando, he told me this. He goes, Kevin, the only notes God receives, it's the one thing I wrote down through the whole entire three-hour conversation. There were so many things we talked about. He said, there's this one truth I do know, I, I can tell you, he goes, the only notes God receives are those that are played for his honor. Those are the only ones he receives. All that motion and all that physical and all that just shouting out stuff with the heart not connected to it, it doesn't go very far. But boy, when your heart is in faith and your love for the Lord is connected to what's coming out of your mouth, man, God, that's the kind of praise that I inhabit my praises. He gets on that. I'm telling you, he gets on that and he gets on you. And that thing that you're needing that can only be met in his presence. The only thing that can meet that need because it's through the heart. It's not through knowledge. You can know all the formulas, all the buttons to push and everything. But man, when your heart is connected to what's coming out of your mouth, it, it causes God to move on your behalf. So we're not just being emotional we're not just you know trying to be loud but look listen to uh, you can follow me here psalms chapter 5 verse 11 but let all those rejoice who put their trust in you so what do you do if you're trusting the lord rejoice. you're supposed to look sad on your face right because you're you're going through the hardest test and you don't know how this thing is going to get fixed you don't know how this thing is going to turn around you don't know how god what god has to work with this thing has been going on too long you don't know how it could possibly get right but he said that if you're trusting him those that put their trust in him he said they will rejoice let them ever shout for joy because you defended them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous and with favor you will surround him with a shield. All because you let God know you trust him. And since you trust him, you're going to get your praise out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Now, I'm a professional visitor. I visit churches for a living during the praise and worship. I looked around because it's what I do. <laughs> Most of you do a pretty good job. Most of you are in. Some of you, you're in half the time. Your focus is only about two minutes at a time. 
I mean, you could be all in at one time, and then the next verse comes along, and go, what are we going to eat for lunch? I mean, our attention span, you know, uh, there's, there's a little meme, there's a little thing about the, the disciples, they, they couldn't stand to uh, pray for one hour, they, they were falling asleep, yeah. so they couldn't make it one hour praying with God on this earth, yeah. they couldn't last one hour wow. of a prayer time with Jesus right. at one of the most critical times of his ministry, yeah. Yeah. but they fished all night. That's true. <laughs> People do what they want to do. That's right. That's right. Amen. Keep preaching. All right. He, he, they, they, they fished all night long. Yeah. I don't know what it, is, what it is that you would do. It could be gaming. Could be video games. <laughs> could be you, YouTubing. Isn't it crazy? Now, I've got to be careful. I don't get to meddling and just spend too much time because this could feel like I'm beating up on you, but I'm just here to obey God. Is that okay? Yeah. But we, we're, we're way too distracted. And, and we make excuses for what we say we, we don't have time for, but really the things that we spend so much time on, that's where our heart is. That's right. That's right. So, look at Psalms 32. We better get off of that. I, I wasn't feeling that with you all. <clears throat> okay. Look what it says, Psalms 35. Verse 27 says, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. I think you'll like this. Who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all day long. Uh, that was uh, Psalms 35, 27. But look at uh, verse, uh, chapter 32, verse 11. Psalms 32, verse 11, just a couple pages back. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy. Hallelujah. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. Hallelujah. But he said, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Hallelujah. So, Romans 15, 13, there's a connection to your rejoicing and being happy and being joyful on purpose that you decide to be. Because Romans 15, 13 says this. Romans 15, 13 says, may the God of hope, means may the God of your expectation. In the New Testament, anytime you see the word hope, it means expectation. It's an ex expectation of a future certainty because the God who promised cannot lie. When Paul said in uh, Titus, he goes, in, in expectation of eternal life, he wasn't saying, I, mean, I sure hope I go to heaven. Right, right. See, our English definition and um, usage of the word hope is like, I hope it doesn't rain this afternoon. Yeah. Well, I don't really know. I don't have any basis to, you know, here in Florida this time of the year, <laughs> you have, you know, hello. Right. But, but. In the New Testament, where you see the word hope, it means a firm expectation of a future certainty because the God who promised cannot lie. So he said, may the God of your expectation, what are you believing God? You know, Ephesians 3.20 says, now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. I like to amplify it says, dare ask or think. When was the last time you dared God to do something for you? Turn to ask, ask somebody next to you. When was the last time you dared God to do Come on. <clears throat> he says, anything that you dare ask or think, he's able to do that. <clears throat> he's able to do that. So he said, may the God of hope, firm expectation, fill you with two things. There's, there should, if you're expecting God, l let me ask an honest question here. Be, be honest. Be true to yourself. Is there anybody in this room that if you could change, is there anybody in this room that there, if, if you knew you could just change it, there would be something in your life right now you'd like to see a change? Okay, if we're honest, I think everyone would say yes to that. Well, if you're, if you're in faith, 
And because you're in faith, now you have an expectation. <clears throat> then what would you look like <clears throat> if you're in faith and you're expecting? You know, is, is Brother Mark your spiritual father or it just, okay, you got several people, mentors, father figures. <clears throat> uh, Mark and Trina was in a meeting, and I think it was among ministers. Mark and Trina Hankins, that is, they, they were in the service, and as they were, it was during the praise and worship part, Trina saw in the spirit realm this substance coming out of people's mouth. There was a substance. She could, in, with a natural eye, see a substance coming out of everyone's mouth in the room. Now, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Trina told Mark, Mark, I see like a substance as everyone's praising right now. I, I'm seeing a substance coming out of their mouth. And Mark turned to Trina and says, what if while we're praising God in his presence, God's causing a substance that's formed by the faith that's released out of your heart and out of your mouth, that a substance is being formed that's creating the thing you're actually praising him for and thanking him before you can see it. That's right. that's good. Come on. That's good. Come on. You say, well, I don't got, you don't got any chapter and verse for that, but you don't have any chapter and verse. It's not. <laughs> but what if, while you're praising God in this place, and this isn't just for today. This is, you know, what, what's happening Wednesday night? <clears throat> Man, I just got excited about that. Just saying worship and praise. Uh, some of my friends that in their first year of their church, they said the number one best thing we ever did was we had a night of prayer for the first year. He said, they said that was the thing that produced the most results for our ministry and for our church than anything else as we called weekly prayer meetings. But I tell you what, I wouldn't miss out on those Wednesday night prayer times because this is the, and, and whether it's Wednesday or whether it's next Sunday morning when the, when a, Clarissa gets up here with the worship team and they start, you know, moving forward and they start leading you. That is a time to practice his presence. That is the time to practice connecting your heart with your mouth. And I want to encourage you, church, see how long you can stay focused because you'll go deeper. The churches I have found in the last 62 years of traveling ministry, the churches that were the most vocal, not just loud, not just emotional, but the church that was connected with their words, the churches that were the most vocal in praising, not even just praising along with the songs that we're reading, but like if pastor got up and he's preaching and says, let's give God a shout. Boy, you are first responder girl. You're first responder. I mean, the praise goes up and all of a sudden <laughs> the word says that when the people rejoice, the house is filled with glory. That's what the Bible says. When the people rejoice, the house is filled with glory. And all of my needs are met according to his riches and glory. Hallelujah. But when the people rejoice, that's when the glory is manifested. And all of my needs are met according to his riches and glory. And when the righteous rejoice, the house is filled with glory. And all of my needs are met right there. Right there when the glory is manifested. I start giving him glory. The glory starts manifesting. When I start rejoicing, the glory starts manifesting. And that's right where I need to be. Because I've got some needs. I've got some prayer things. I've got some assignments. I've got some things that need to come through for me. I need this. I need that. And God said, that's where it's going to be. Right there in my glory. Your, all of your needs are met in, in, according to my riches in the glory. Well, hey, hallelujah, praise the Lord. You know, people, people they offer up the sacrifice of praise. Well, I really don't feel like it, but I'm going to go for it. You know, David said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and half that's within me, bless his holy name. I I'm sorry, I'm feeling a little resistance right now from you. You know, he said, David said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all. Oh, can I just ask you a question, a simple question? When was the last time you actually praised God with absolutely everything? You didn't hold back anything. You got, you got it on. You said, Lord, I give you everything. My heart, my everything about it, my mouth, my, my heart. I give you all of it. I'm not holding anything back. David says, I'm not going to give you something that didn't cost me anything. Hallelujah. Glory. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, 
and all, all, all that's within me. All that's within me. All that's within me. I bless your name, Lord. Just, just every now and then, just go ahead and step on over and give him the all. Not that little token shout. Not that little hallelujah. Come on, let's give him the highest praise. Pray, glory. Come on, you know how we do. I'm putting my, I've been there. Amen. You know that little token shout? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we just need to step back and remember where you were before you met Jesus. That's right. Maybe we just need to go down occasionally to memory lane That's right. before you met Jesus. When you were down on that road and things didn't look like they were ever going to, and you know it could have been a lot worse. You could be in jail. You could be you could not be alive right now. You were stuck. You were hooked. You were in bondage. But Jesus came to you. He turned things around for you. And it was going that way. But look what he did for you. Look what he did for you. Maybe we just need to go down a little memory lane. We need to do that in every service, every praise and worship. Every time. Worship team, you ought to be the, the first one promoting that. Don't care about how they look. That's right. That's right. Don't you tell you you're the, they're going to be the mirror of you. If, you. if you get crazy for Jesus up here, they, I promise you they'll get crazy out here. All right. You know what? You know that verse that says that when you praise God, God will give up increase for you. Think about that. I believe. I believe that. You know, there's a man on America's Home Videos. You ever see that show? What's that called? America's home. Funniest. H A America A Yeah. A F T. America's funniest. V. V. Okay, I'm just making sure you're all dialed in with me. America's funniest. You know, I, I tell you, if you've ever seen that show, we lived in Birmingham, Alabama for, for twenty years. Most of the people you saw in that show, those were our neighbors. You know, it, you know the the famous last few words of a redneck is this. Hey y'all, watch this. And that's, the, that's the last few words of some rednecks. They go, hey, y'all, watch it. Something, something crazy is getting ready to go down. You, hey, y'all, watch this. Most of those people on that show, I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth, they, they were our neighbors. A lot of crazy stuff happens in Alabama. But I was watching this one married couple, or they're they about to get married, this one black couple, and this, this, they called him the old glory man. So now, some, some of you may know what I'm talking about. Uh, this couple was at the altar, and this man just was pacing. He couldn't stay still. He goes, oh, glory. Ooh, I mean, there's a priest. You got the bride here. He's standing here, and he's getting ready to lead them in their vows. And he's standing up there, going, "Oh, glory! Ooh, you, you did." So I'm not making this up. You saw it. Oh, glory! They call him the old glory man. Oh, glo glory, glory, glory! And and the the priest goes, "Now, sir, sir, uh, just repeat this after me. Will you take this this woman to be your lawful wedded wife?" And he goes, "I do." He goes, "Oh, glory! Oh, glory to God!" So now the the priest is going to turn to the woman, and he goes, now this, this brother, I don't know, he, he looks like a guy that might have been single for a long time. And so I can only imagine, he knows what's getting ready to happen in a couple hours. He's, he's going to have a break, he's getting ready to have some breakout moments, you know. Okay, I, that's all I'm going to say, I'm just going to leave it right there. You know, but he, he, I don't know how excited, there's, there's reasons why people get excited. So he was excited, she, and so the priest look, looks at the wife and so, says, will you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? And she said, I do. And he goes, oh, glory to God. Am I right? Do you know that man won the $100,000? No joke. You know, because he made it through the, the first thing, and then they, he got to the and that I'm convinced Psalm 67, verse 5, went into work right there because the Lord said, well, he, national television, he's not ashamed. He's giving glory to me. I've got to cause the earth to give up increase. So here's $100,000. I mean, there's all kinds of dog funny things, you know. And dogs seem to always win, right? You know, or babies doing weird things. And, and so, but, but no, this man just praising God, he won the $100,000. Oh, glory. glory. Makes you want to just shout glory right now a little bit. Why don't you just shout glory to God right now? For he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. For he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. He is good. He is good. He's got good things for you. 
and his mercy endureth forever. You know, I found out that the best definition for mercy is where God will treat you better than you deserve. How many of you in this place can just be thankful and praise God? Just the fact you're not going to get what you deserve. God's going to treat you better. I have a friend that said that ought to get both hands and both feet up in the air. I mean, just, I mean some, of you, some of you would be in jail right now. Come on now. Don't look at anybody. But you know, some of those people are in this room. You'd be in jail right now if it wasn't for God's mercy. I'm so thankful. I would have probably married a wrong woman. You know? Uh, yeah, there's all kinds of things that could have happened if, if I hadn't learned to put my trust in him. Turn, if you, if you would, to 1 Peter. You doing okay out there? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm not going to be like that last traveling minister who went to 1.30 because he, he might make it back, but I want to make sure I come back. <clears throat> Are we okay? Okay. We having fun? You know, in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of sadness. Isn't that right? No, no. no and, and, and he that sits in the heavens, they cry and, and they, they whine a lot. No, no, the Bible says, he who sits in the heavens laughs. How many of you have been risen with Christ and you're seated in the heavenly places? Come on, church, see yourself up there today. See yourself risen up together with Christ. And in the presence of the Lord, which you are, and he's in you, and you're in him, and he's in you, in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. You know what, uh, Romans chapter 12, I was sharing this with the pastors last night. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says this, I beseech you, brethren. Can we pull that up? Uh, is, is it the Weiss translation? The one, the one out? You, you wouldn't have the Weiss translation, would you? <clears throat> okay, yeah. I know you all study the Weiss translation all the time. But anyways, no, I, I, I don't either. But here, here's what it said. Oh, I'll, I'll give you the King James first. Well, it says right here. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Next verse. And do, be not, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Weiss translation says this. We just can't get enough of this translation. Listen to this. Stop assuming an outward expression of one that doesn't come from within you and is not representative of who you are in your inner man. But change your outward expression to one that comes from within you and is not patterned after this age, but comes from the renewing of your mind. So God's word instructions to you, us believers who are obedient to God, because you know James says that if you hear the word, if you hear the word only and you're not a doer of the word, the devil deceives you. No. Oh, I didn't say the devil deceived you? Who deceives who? Now, is that not sad? That people deceive themselves. It's not, you can't even blame the devil. If you hear the word, so I found myself saying this as I was preaching. The only way you can hear the word properly is with the intentions of doing it. When Pastor Mott ministers each service, you might think, well, well, I need that. I'm not, I'm not going through that right now. Let, let me help you out. The Lord will show you things to come. Come on, family of God. You, you can't ever listen just to gain knowledge. Faith is not knowledge. Knowledge is not faith. Say that again. Faith is not knowledge. Knowledge is not faith. Faith without works is dead. So when you hear the word, it has to be mixed with faith. That's what happened with the children of Israel. That's why they kept going around the desert. Because it says they didn't mix faith with what they heard. Or in other words, they didn't purpose that they were going to do what they heard. So the only way you can properly hear the word of God is I have already purposed before the next word comes out of Pastor Mont's mouth is I'm going to hear that word and then I'm already imagining how does that look like in my life? How can I apply that? How do I need, how, what do I need to do to implement that and do that? Because it's acting on that word that's going to keep you from downfalls in what lies a month from now, not just hearing a word that's fixing your current situation. Now, he's going to bring words. It's going to massage. It's going to, it, it's going to minister to your heart of where you're at right now. 
But a lot of what he's going to minister is because there's something coming and the Holy Ghost through your pastor is preparing you for it. I can't say that any better. I can't say that any better. So we got a lot of deceived people. There's nobody, don't even look around here because there's nobody here like this, but I know a lot of people at a lot of churches completely deceived because they, they're, they're, they love to hear the word. They love to know more. But if you could just put a tape recorder around their neck and record every conversation they, they have, we'd find out how much doing the word they actually are doing. Okay, I better get back to my message here. Where are we, Lord? Did you turn to First Peter? Are you okay, sis? You're enjoying this today. I, thank you for... I, I feel you, sis. It's going right into your spirit, isn't it? It's going right into you. Hallelujah. In his presence, things change. Things are changing. Things are moving in this service right here. And the... Uh, the temperature is rising. And the type of ministers that you all have, what you're sensing right now, that's his, that's his present. He's pleased. He's pleased because you have opened your heart to him. There's a surrendering in this room right now. It's in this atmosphere that God can address things. And he can fix things. When, when, you, when you surrender and God sees that in your heart, you, you realize God won't bless you to lose you. And he won't pay you to disobey him. I, w I was at, a, I think I was... I might have been telling you guys, yeah, I told you this at the table. Just, uh, takes a little time to tell it. I was up in Canada, and this lady I was standing in front of, I said, sis, let me tell you something. I said, God wants to do so much more for you. But he's having a hard time doing it. Because you've got some wrong relationships. And if, if you would get rid of, cut off those wrong relationships, you'll find out God will be able to do so much more for you. So after the service, she gets the interpreter. We were up in Quebec, Canada. She gets the interpreter. Interpreter walks over and goes, this lady right here wants to know, what did you mean by that wrong relationship? She says, she said she doesn't have any wrong relationships. And I sat there and I thought, okay, now, Lord, how do we answer this? I said, well, sis, I said, you know, there's three kinds of prophets. There's false prophets, there's true prophets, and there's wrong prophets. You can be a prophet and be wrong. Brother Hagen, one of the leading generals and prophets in our lifetime, uh, he would get up and say, you know what, I could miss it. And he, could, he would say, you know, there's been times he missed it. I'm glad we're not under the Old Testament, so if the prophet missed it, you get stoned to death. I'm kind of thankful for that. I really am. I'm still standing here. So I said, uh, you know, there's three kinds of prophets. I said, you know, sis, if it means nothing to you, just put it on the shelf. If the Holy Spirit needs to address something in your life about wrong relationships, he'll let you know. But just forget about it if he doesn't. I get to the restaurant, and I said, hey, pastor, I need to tell you about a conversation I had with one of your sheep, because that's, that's just honoring the pastors. I said, I had this conversation with her, and she said she doesn't have any wrong relationships. I, I couldn't even get to explain it, and the pastor's wife says, Brother Kevin, Brother Kevin, Brother Kevin. I said, yes, Cindy, what is it? She goes, that woman you're talking about is pregnant with an unsaved man she's living with. They're not married. He's not saved. And she's pregnant with her child, with his child. And I'm sitting there, hmm, what part of fornication does she not understand? Are you, are you all here today? Yeah. Can we talk real like that? Can we? Yeah. yeah, so, you know, we're in different times. And some people's hearts are calloused. But what I sense in this room, there are some things that are being turned right now. There are some things. 
being worked on. If you take what I see that God's doing the surgery in your heart and you walk out of here today and you don't let that leave, you'll see that you'll be fast-tracking, things will get accelerated, and things will, you will see the turn come quickly that it seemed like it never would end. Can we just thank God for that? You believe the Lord, you'll be established. You believe his prophets, you'll prosper. I don't know about you. I think I do. I want to prosper. I, I want my heart to be right before him. Hallelujah. Look here. We'll, 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 I think we can close with this, but this is so good. Now, before, you know, we read some scriptures on uh, rejoicing, didn't we? Back there in Psalms. Uh, now, here in 1 Peter, you're going to see the word rejoice. Let me find it. And I want to, I uh, before I read the, the scripture here, <clears throat> I want to tell you what this word rejoice means so that you can uh, know what, what uh, Peter's talking about by the Holy Ghost. But this particular rejoicing here that you're about to read uh, is, means this. The word rejoice means to be cheerful, to brighten up, to shout for joy, to creak with a loud sound. Oh, glory to God! I thought, that man was creaking. <laughs> that man was creaking. To creak with a loud sound, to jump, to be glad, Hallelujah. to spin around under the influence of any violent emotion. <laughs> David danced his clothes off. That's how happy he was. Did he not? Yeah. I totally do not recommend that this morning. <laughs> Please, for the love of Jesus, do not do that. But it needs to be noted that that's, David said he was so ecstatic over God's word, like one who found a great treasure. When he knew he was going to have the presence of God back at his home, where Obed-Edom had just received all the blessing that comes from the presence of the Lord, because they took and they dropped off. You know, when Uzzah ridged up and did what God told, instructed them not to do, he tried to sturdy with his hands the ark as it was starting to tip, and God struck him down, and David got offended. Yeah. I highly recommend don't be offended at God for no reason. Amen. You got offended because something happened in, in one of your family members? You don't know the whole story. That's right. That's right. Amen. Friends, you'll never know the whole story. That's right. the that is the ploy in the invitation of the devil to make you offended, to cut you off. There ought to be three people who should never, ever be able to offend you. God, your pastor, and your mate. It'll cut you off of the supply of the Spirit faster than anything. You can't, your faith can't take the hit of being offended at God. You can't, you can't afford it. It's stupid. Just, I, I can't even... I don't know what else I could say. It's just flat stupid to get upset and offended at the one who's got all of your answers. That's right. That's right. How Amen. stupid is that? Yep. <sighs> to sing out loud and shout out loud. So we got cheerful, brighten up, shout with joy, creak with loud sound, jump, to be glad, to spin around under any violent emotion, to sing out loud, to shout out loud. To be in the Spirit is to be more aware of God than you are of yourself. The reason why many times people can't rejoice in church is because they're self-conscious. How would you act if you just actually absolutely said, you know what, I don't have any worry, I don't have any cares, I don't have any fear. Can I tell you something? No one really cares about you as far as what you look like. That's right. I, gar I can guarantee you this. No one cares about how you look. That's right. They yeah. don't. That's right. That's right. I'm telling you, I, I think some people, they don't believe this. They don't care. Matter of fact, if you did finally praise God, like they would probably think, wow, look at that. They got breakthrough. They, they actually, listen, they're all, I need to pick up my game because look at them. They're all in. They, they have gone all in. They actually, they, there's been something that's happened in their life. They actually believe God is going to do something big for them. They're actually all in. And look at them go, I better get in there. I, start, I better start praying. I better go ahead and run around the room. One time. I better just rejoice a little bit. I might as well go ahead and praise. 
Like, I better, I better praise like I haven't praised before. I better jump like I haven't jumped before. I better get my praise on. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I just, it took so much to get my hand up. At some point, you're going to let go. When you get your praise on, shackles are going to fall off you. Listen, a lot of people, they don't realize how bound up they are. They don't realize, listen, if you feel tight right now, you, I'm talking to you. The Holy Ghost is, he's moving on you. I feel a little uncomfortable right now. Perfect. You need to get a little uncomfortable. Because when you get your shout on, things will begin to move and change and blessings will flow. Because if he can get you to, if he can get you to praise uninhibitedly, he might get you to start, start paying your tithes. But anyways. Did I, is my mic on? Did I, did I say that? Did you find 1 Peter chapter 1? We're almost done. Verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice. My goodness. We just read what, what this word means. This word rejoicing means to jump, to shout out loud, to spin around, to brighten up, to be glad, to shout with a loud voice. Hallelujah. This is what you would do if you believe the Bible. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved with various trials. Anybody besides me have ever had your back against the wall financially? I can't tell you how many times over the years Annie and I said, man, what we need to do is some shouting. We need to give and we need to do some shouting. We need to give. During COVID, we, we chose 11 ministries and boom. Went out the door. <clears throat> I saw, when that COVID thing hit, I thought, oh, okay. So traveling ministers need airplanes. The airports are all shut down for how long? Just two and a half weeks. Oh, okay, we, it won't be bad. Oh, you mean three and a half months? <laughs> well, that changed things. We just sent money off and we started praising God. We had the most prosperous time of our ministry in 30 years during COVID. We had a pastor call us and goes, listen, you, you guys have been on my heart, and we're here at our church, we're going to have a stay home revival because of COVID. We're, we're going to have live stream, stay home, everyone's going to be watching, but we're having revival, stay home revival, and we want you to re just record one service. We recorded that one service, they sent us $5,000. I thought, man, I'm liking these one night revival meetings. <laughs> And sleeping in my bed and preaching from my couch, I thought, God, you are amazing. And that was just, that was just one. <laughs> Other things. Have, but we had the most prosperous. But the thing is, we started giving and we started praising and we acted like we didn't have a care. Yes. But it's act like we didn't have a care. So it goes on. Now look at verse uh, 7. It says, that it, the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tested with fire, may be found to the praise and the honor and the glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, here's what we wanted to get to. <clears throat> Whom having not seen, you love. How many of you love him? You love the Lord, all your heart. Whom you, whom you haven't seen, you love. Now, now, watch this. Though now you do not see him, yet believing. Everyone say believing. Believing. believing you do what? You rejoice with joy inexpressible, unexpressible, and full of glory. Someone tell me what the next word that comes after rejoicing is. What? What comes after rejoicing? What comes after rejoicing? Receiving the end of your faith. We've got believing. Are you standing for something? Do you need God to do something? Have you said amen to a request? Lord, I need this. I'm believing you. 1 John 5, 14, one of my favorite verses. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, we know he hears us. Aren't you glad you know God hears you when you... Aren't you glad you know God? God Almighty hears you when you pray. That is amazing. God hears you when you pray. And if we know he hears us when we pray, we know we have... The petitions we desire of him. Right. What an amazing, Amen. an amazing verse. Hallelujah. We know he hears us when we pray. So what do you do after you say amen? That I know you heard me. I know you're working on it. 
I'm giving you time to fix things. It was a mess to get here. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to turn this thing some around. But I've said amen. So I'm believing you. I've got my trust. What does Psalm say? If you trust the Lord, you're going to rejoice and you're going to shout and you're going to be glad. So it says you believe, then you rejoice, then you receive the end of your faith. What is the big thing in the sandwich between believing and receiving the end of your faith? What's between there? Rejoicing. I believe it's the biggest missing link to people having received the end of their faith for those who've asked. They went to whining and thinking instead of rejoicing. Would you stand to your feet? Hallelujah. Did you get something? We hope this message has encouraged you today. For more information on our ministry or to donate, visit onewayministries.net.